Hi everyone, welcome to the Getting Started tutorial for Physics Toolbox. Here I'm going to give you a couple of starter examples on some of the ways you can use this new tool for iClone, and why it's more of a plugin than simply a pack. The Physics Toolbox includes a number of basic controls and more advanced structures that all take advantage of the powerful physics constraint feature in iClone. The basic controls are simple forces and basic mechanical parts, from catapults and motors to bombs and ballistas. There are also a number of L2 structures which are constructed from various controls assembled together to form basic machines. So what's so special about all this? Well, not only does using these physics tools save you hours of keyframe animation when creating natural movement, but you can also build your own unique contraptions using these basic tools. It's an essential part of any iClone animator's arsenal if you truly want to unleash the power and potential of the software. Okay, first here I have a box and a ramp. Notice that my ramp has a static physics state, and I'm going to give it a self-mesh to make sure that an object can indeed roll up it. Since boxes normally don't roll up ramps, I'm going to bring in my first physics control here called Motor A. I can click and drag it in from my content manager, and you'll immediately see a physics control panel appear. The motor itself will center on ground level and break through the infinite plane that I'm using as a floor. So I'll move it up to about ground level first. What I'll do next is double click on my control panel to bring up the advanced options. Here you see that I can decide which axis I want my motor to rotate on. Keep in mind this will be the prop's local axis. Because I want it to eventually roll up that ramp, I'm going to keep it on the green Y axis for now. After I close the advanced panel, I'll get to testing out the motor. When I press play, you'll see that it will begin to rotate at a steady speed. You can use this motor to power other props such as gears or tires, but we'll get to that later. If I change the value of the speed slider, I can also make the motor spin the other way. But the problem is that the motor won't move when it spins. This is essentially because it's pinned in place by a constraint. A constraint will automatically be applied to all physics controls and objects they target. To get past this, I'm going to use this little blue dummy on the top here. Notice that when I click it, there are no physics or constraints on it. In order to apply a constraint, I'll first need to apply some physics to it. As soon as I do that, what I want to do is apply a generic constraint to it, which is the most flexible type of constraint. Now, the settings for my generic constraint are important here. What I want to do is set all my movement limits to free, so that my cube will be able to move in all directions. What I don't want, however, is any rotation available, because essentially, my motor already has its own rotation. I also want to leave this as a world constraint, so it's constrained to the world axis instead of a single object. When I open my motor's constraint settings, you can see that it's a simple hinge constraint that only allows it to rotate around its y-axis, which is why it has that type of movement. What I want to do here is select a new target for my motor. I'm going to choose my constrained cube. What this will do essentially is incorporate all of those constrained properties from that prop onto my motor. As you may recall, movement was set to free. So what that means now is that when I activate my motor, it can move freely according to its natural rotation. Now I can roll my motor along the ground naturally, and it will react using normal physics. If I move my speed slider back and forth, I can give my motor a good run up the ramp and over. Also, if I want to get more traction on the floor, I can select my infinite plane and simply apply some more friction to it. Once I do that, my wheel can get off to a better start. It's really simple to apply this motor movement to another prop as well. You can see here that if I move my motor and try playing again, it will fall first because the constrained box will fall to the ground. What I can do to avoid that is to go into the constraints on my motor and select world now instead of that cube. Now the cube will fall by itself. Don't worry, we're still going to need that constrained cube though, so I'll keep it around. I'm going to move my sphere under it though, because this is going to be my next rolling object. Once I've done that, I'm going to make sure my cube is not selected as the target of my motor, and instead select the sphere. Now, that sphere has all the same settings as my motor, but I still want it to target the cube like I did before, in order to obtain that freedom of movement through an intermediary constrained prop. Once I do that, you can see now that when I activate my motor, that the ball will now roll naturally.
Okay, this next project here is a simple example of lift and fall, which is an example of a slider type control. This is used to naturally lift or move objects along a single axis. What I'm going to do is get this superhero to lift this bus with his mind. So first things first, I'll import in my lift and fall control, but you can see that when I drag it in, it won't appear right away. This is because dummy display is not on. I can toggle that with control D. First what I want to do is select my bus as a target object. Now I can either select the bus directly, or I can also select it from the content manager, which ensures that the bus and all of its individual parts are included in the selection. Right away I'm just going to boost the maximum height and speed for my lift. Also, be aware that this control will only go along the red x-axis, so make sure that your x-axis is pointing in the direction that you want to go. So let's press the up button and see the lift. Whoops, looks like we have a problem. I want to toggle rigid body simulation on to make sure that my physics will actually work. Now you can see this first time that the speed of the bus lift is way too fast for the animation. So I'll go back into my advanced option panel and turn down the speed a little bit. Now you can see that when I try again, the bus motion will be much more suitable. Notice how the dynamic bus will bounce slightly off the ground as it lands. Okay, so for this last example, I'm going to quickly introduce you to the L2 controls. Just think of these controls as a combination of various L1 controls put together in a sort of machine. So say hello to Mr. Tank here first. The first thing you'll notice is that the UI panel is a little bit different. If I press play, you can see that my tank will crawl forward and then turn according to my commands. Okay, that's pretty cool, but what if I want to add something onto it, like a claw perhaps? I'll just go ahead and import that in from the content manager as well. What I want to do first is reposition and rotate it so that it will fit suitably on the front of my tank. Also notice that it will bring up a separate UI panel as well. Once my claw is positioned correctly, I can test that out by opening and closing it. But what you'll notice right away when I move my tank tracks is that there is no connection between the two machines. In order to remedy that, I'll double click on the control tile for my claw, and then select Pick Target. When I do that, you'll see that when I move my tank this time, that the claw will go along with it. Alright, now I'll show it in action. You can see that I've imported in this dynamic curved prop here, and what I want to do is get it into my tank's claw. I can use the controls in my control panel to gradually get closer to my item then pick it up and move it back to my target. Okay, now if you want to save your machine as an iProp, you'll need to know this next part. If I simply link my claw to my tank using the advanced options panel, this connection will not be sustained when the iProp is saved. You can see that when I try to add it to my custom prop folder, that the thumbnail still only shows the tank. What I really need to do if I want to save my machine as an iProp is use the traditional attach method from the modify panel to the right. Once I attach my claw to the tank using this method, then you will see the hierarchy change in the scene manager, and I'll be able to save the entire thing as an iProp if I select the parent object, which is the tank, and then save it using the same method. Just give your custom prop a name, and then you're ready to import it again. You can see that when I import in my first iProp that it's missing the claw. While when I import in the second one where I use the attach function from the modify panel, that everything seems to look just fine. 
It's super easy to combine together various L1 and L2 physics controls to create your own monstrosities, so why not get started today?